In this video, we're going to introduce Ohm's Law and show how it can be used to calculate either the resistance of a material or given the resistance and the voltage to calculate the current or given the current and the resistance, be able to calculate the voltage associated with it. The German physicist Georg Ohm is credited with identifying and, and placing into a, uh, you know, coming up with the relationships, the mathematical relationship that links voltage and current and um, the voltage and current flowing through a, a device or through a material and defining this concept known as resistance. So here's the deal. Once again, we've got some material. It's got the nuclei. It has a bunch of electrons associated with each one of those atoms. And we apply an external voltage source. Current then will flow from the positive terminal to the negative voltage, the positively marked terminal to the negative marked terminal. Current then is said to flow. For a given voltage and a, a, a given current flowing, we're now ready to define what resistance actually is. The ratio of the voltage that is applied and the corresponding current that flows is the formal definition of resistance. In other words, take the voltage that's applied, divide it by the current that flows, and that gives you the measure of resistance. Another way of stating that is that V, the voltage across the material, the resisted material, will equal the current times the resistance. And frequently, this is the form that Ohm's law is stated. V is equal to current times resistance, or V equals I times R. The schematic symbol, the symbol that we use when we're drawing electrical circuits, the symbol that we use for resistance is this symbol right here. It's meant to suggest that electrons coming in are going to be opposed, or the flow of them will be opposed, sort of like a baffle or a, a switchback along a, a mountain path or something like that. The electrons aren't able to flee unimpeded, flow unimpeded. There is a resistance to that. So in a circuit schematic where we have a complete circuit, would have the voltage source with wires connecting to the resistor and then flowing on back. You'll notice in this case that the current is the same throughout the entire device, or throughout the entire circuit. Now, the units of resistance are volts per amp, or more commonly, we'll refer to the units of resistance as being ohms, named after Georg Ohm. The symbol for ohms is the capital Greek letter omega. Let's now formally state Ohm's law. If we have a device, a resistor here, that has a voltage applied so that, and we're talking about the higher voltage being marked at this point and the negative voltage or the lower potential here at this point, and we reference our current flowing from the positively marked terminal to the negatively marked terminal, then it is true the mathematical relationship between them is that the voltage across them will equal the current times the resistance of the device. Now we can solve this for I by dividing both sides of the equation by R, and we get then that current can be calculated by taking the voltage across the device and dividing by the resistance. And then, as we already saw, the actual definition of resistance is take the voltage that is applied across the device, divide by the current that's flowing through the device, and that then equals resistance. A mnemonic from that, if you need one, you'll get these things memorized, is this circle with V up here on top equals I times R. The way this works is V equals I times R, or I equals V over R, or R equals V over I. Kind of clever, huh? As we've already mentioned, resistance can be either a, a, a positive, a, a useful, a yeah, useful or a um, necessary concept, or it can also be a detrimental thing. So there are situations when we will actually add resistance to the circuit. When we do that, one way of doing that is with small little devices called resistors. And this is just a picture of them. They've got a wire coming in and a wire leaving. And then in between, 
They're typically made out of copper. Now, these devices are relatively small. They're about a half of an inch long. These are a little bit, uh, not quite the scale. But they're small enough that you uh, would have a hard time reading numbers on them that would tell us how large the resistor would be. Now, resistors can be can come in uh, the size of resistances range anywhere from uh, less than one ohm on up to a million ohms, 10 million ohms. So there needs to be a coding system. And as you look at these resistors, you'll see that there are a number of stripes. Let's take this one right here, for example. It has an orange stripe, a green stripe, it looks like, and uh, another green stripe. Let's say it's orange, green, and green. So, orange, green, and green. Each of the colors is coded to represent a digit, a number. Black means zero. Brown represents one. Red, two. Orange, three, and so on. You'll notice that you start with black and then brown, and then it then follows the progression through the spectrum. Red to orange to yellow to green, blue, violet. Gray represents the digit eight, and white represents the digit nine. So these three stripes are a type of scientific notation, um, have kind of a scientific notation flavor to them. The first two stripes represent the significant digits. In this case, we've got orange, which represents a three. We've got green, which represents a five. And green, again, represents five. The first two give us the significant digits. The third, in this case it's a five, tells us the number of zeros we add in after the two significant digits. So this is orange, green, green. The first digit is three, the second digit is five, and we then add five zeros after it, or three, five, zero, 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 zero. So that would be a 3,500,000 ohm resistor if that was the coloration, or if that was the coloring stripes. Now you'll notice that there is a fourth stripe on here. The fourth stripe represents the tolerance or the accuracy with which the resistor has been made. If it's a silver stripe, it represents a 10% precision, which means that the value of the resistor will be, in this case, 3.5 million ohms plus or minus 10%, so plus or minus uh, 350,000 ohms. A gold stripe would tell you that it is a higher or more precise resistor and that it would be accurate within plus or minus 5%. So let's just practice this here. What would a 1,000 ohm resistor have as it's striping? Well, that would be one zero followed by two zeros. A one is a brown, zero is black, and then we need two zeros after that, so that would be red. So 1,000 ohm resistor would have a brown stripe, a black stripe, and a red stripe. Then if it had a silver stripe after it, it would be plus or minus 10%. So at spec, for that resistor to meet specifications, it could be as much as 1,000 plus 10% or 1,100 ohms on the high end. And it could be as small as 1,000 minus 10% or 900, 900, not 9,000, 900 ohms on the uh, small side.